part of Windsor Board of Education meeting of Wednesday, January 18th, 2023 to order. The first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance and then a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. The next order of business is superintendent's presentation of the 2023-2024 budget. Dr. Hill. Thank you, President Fury, and <clears throat> welcome guests online and here in the boardroom. So I'm going to go over my proposed budget for the 2023-2024 school year. This is, uh, we're not getting into the details of each point in the budget, but you are welcome to come back to our uh, individual meetings that I'll, you'll see at the end of my presentation that we'll do over the next few weeks after tonight. And that is when we actually go into the uh, budget and explore it out by departments and school buildings. And so you get a much deeper uh, look at the numbers in each one, but that will not be the case tonight. Tonight is just the superintendent's proposed budget in a general overview. All right, so next slide. Okay, oh, I'm looking at this. I need to look at that. <laughs> okay, so as I, I start off each year, um, before I talk about the obligations here, I like to say that um, we're not as focused on COVID as we have been the prior two years. However, we have seen an increase in prices of pretty much everything um, in our life. And so, again, I'm, I'm always cognizant of what's going on financially with us here in our society, particularly here in the state and in our town. So trying to be sensitive to that, but understanding that we still have contractual obligations that we have to meet as a school district. And those <clears throat> obligations are, first and foremost, it's the contractual obligations for our employees. So we have six bargaining units, teachers, administrators, paraeducators, uh, the administrative professionals, our nurses, and then we have a group that's comprised of custodians, maintenance, food service, and safety monitors. And so each year, those contracts um, include raises, uh, gross wage increases, and, and, and some of the contract steps for their employees. So those are obligations that we have to meet as a school district uh, each year. So that's the first portion. Next one. And then we have uh, important areas such as technology, physical plant, and special education. So in technology, of course, that budget increases each year because the, the software that we purchase, um, it doesn't stay at the same price for our licenses. Equipment has to be replaced. We've been uh, I've actually pulled back in a lot of replacement um, recommendations from the technology department. I know they would much prefer that we do a, a lot grander level of replacement, but in trying to be sensitive again to the budget and what we're going to present to the board and you know hopefully to the town, I didn't want us to have a much larger number. So even this percentage increase is, is really a bare bones percentage increase, as I said, based on the annual cost increases of licenses and, and software and some equipment upgrades. Also, we have the physical plant. You see our util utilities and operational um, costs have increased uh, to the tune of 0.58% uh, or $442,000. Um, as I said already, that the cost of everything pretty much has gone up. And so we'll see these costs constantly reflected throughout this proposed budget. In special education, we see a 1.56% increase or um, just over a million dollars in an out of district tuition deficit. We, this is a cost, this is not a Windsor issue and I wanna make sure the public clearly understands that. This is not a Windsor issue or even a Connecticut issue, but this is a nationwide issue in terms of special ed costs. We just really, I mean, just due to IDEA, we're required legally to meet the needs of all of our students and those needs have various costs and we don't have any control over that. Just a few outplaced students. Those would be students who are not being formally educated in Windsor Public Schools' respective school buildings, uh, but they're at a site 
offered by a private organization or entity, the cost could be easily, you know, a, a couple hundred thousand dollars for just a student. So these are costs that we have no, no control over and we just will see them continually rise. Because as we see cost increases to do business here, those organizations, you know, I assume they have their cost increases to do business and in business, cost increases get passed on to the consumer in this situation, we're the consumer. Next slide. So the next area, <clears throat> excuse me, that's part of our, our annual increases, employee benefits. So employee benefits include health insurance, dental insurance, life and disability insurance, our 401A, and our FICA med charges, which gives us a total increase of 0.78%, or just under $600,000. And I think we're all, most, I don't see too many no children here, so we all know what all these are. These are costs that we, we see. We see deductions on our pay stubs, and these are you know, benefits that we use and need. So the total cost of doing business, when I use this term, I'm talking about just to have the district run, because it, it doesn't run on free money anywhere. It, it costs to run a school district. So the total cost of doing business, we see our contractual obligations. Um, at 1.8 mil, physical plant services 442,000, technology budget budget excuse me 449,000, and our magnet school tuition is another cost um, that has, you know increases. So $200,000 there, and then as I just finished with the last slide, our special education out of district tuition 1.56 percent or 1.1 million, and then our employee benefits at another almost 600,000, which in total is a budget increase equal to 6.22% or $4.7 million. Next slide. Estimated revenue to the town. So our educational cost sharing has been flat. So it's still 11 million or 11.5 million. Health services is 58,000. Sped excess costs, 1.3 million. And our sped tuition, 150,000. So total. Um, estimated revenue to the town is $13,056,066. You see the note to refer to the budget book for a complete listing of these grants and monies. Next slide. So in order for us to not present that six plus percent, <laughs> you know, cost of doing business number to you, as, I, as I've talked to folks, there's no way I could present a number like that and expect anyone to accept that, we had to start finding cuts. So we found cuts, as I mentioned, in technology budget and other areas first and foremost. I always try and have for many years um, as an administrator to do cuts in budget cuts in terms of you know reducing costs as far away from the students as possible. Um, but it's just, it becomes you know increasingly difficult to do that. And so we do have staffing reductions, as you see noted here, so uh, 1.0 would be one position or one FTE uh, at the high school for a social studies teacher, one for a family and consumer science teacher, and then we have one for a science teacher, and then we have two, I'll just say to be announced or at large at this point, two more FTEs that are going to be cuts in order for us to continue to shave our budget. Next slide, thank you. So total operating cost for 22-23 was $76,484,436. The dollar increase to the budget is equal to 4.84% or $3,699,575. So our total operating cost for this upcoming school year, 2023-2024, will be $80,184,011. And as I said, this was superintendent's proposed budget overview. So for the public and of course the board and finance committee will already be there along with myself and my staff. We will flesh out the budget line by line, department by department on these dates starting Tuesday, January 24th, 6 p.m. here in the boardroom. Then it'll be January 31st, that Tuesday at 6 p.m. again here in the boardroom and then Tuesday, February 7th at 6 p.m. here in the boardroom. And then we have a finance committee only on the 14th 
at 6.30 p.m. here in the boardroom if needed. All public forums and finance committee meetings will be held with an audience to visitors portion at each meeting. BOE adoption of budget is part of a regular BOE meeting on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023 at 7 p.m. So that's the planned adoption date as, as we stand right now. And that is superintendent's proposed budget for 2023-2024. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Um, not excited to see uh, the six percent mark that was there, um, but I know in talking to other board chairs throughout the state, um, and I haven't talked to them recently, but um, several weeks ago, everything was coming. Most things were coming in between five and ten percent to roll over, yep. and uh, many were not sure how much below that they were, if any, they they'd be able to get to. Um, I have a question kind of for you and also for Mr. Lockhart, our finance chair, and I'd also like Mr. Uh, Lockhart to give him an opportunity to react, um, uh, anything he'd want to add. But more for the audience as, as well as to the board, are we going to take, is there an understanding yet? Are we going to take the budget book and, and just go through it? Or is there a, a rhyme or reason where you may start? Because some parents may want to come specifically for a school, but not come to learn sure. about extracurricular activities or something. Sure. I'll have Ms. Batilder flush that out for you. Um, so our first meeting, um, we plan to review all of the school sites, athletics, and CTE. And then from there, if we're on, um, on time after that first meeting, um, we'll hand out a schedule for uh, a company meetings um, to follow through. Um, but I, I can also post um, our, our, the schedule online if that's helpful to the public also. Thank you. Um, I, I know... Uh, the executive committee met with Dr. Hill and the understanding was since we weren't getting the budget today, unless there's something that immediately jumps out at you, the best thing to do is to send questions um, either based on the PowerPoint or based on, on we start reviewing the budget book, get those in advance of the meeting. Uh, our next meeting, um, obviously it sounds like we're starting with the school sites. So questions as, as early as you can if, when you have them to Mr. Lockhart, Dr. Hill, and uh, mm -hmm. Sally Brown. So the staff may have to do some work. So if we come that day with them, they may say, well, we'll get it to you next week. <laughs> so as best you can. It doesn't mean if there are questions as we go through what people are presenting to us, we can't ask folks questions. But to be as efficient as possible, because uh, we know this is a, an important project where we'll be looking at you know, every line item that's there. Uh, Mr. Locker, anything to add, sir? The only thing I'll add is that I'm going to try to avoid February 14th for numerous reasons. <laughs> and But I typically don't like to have that fourth meeting unless we absolutely have to. So the three meetings that I, we plan on having, um, we'll start promptly at 6. I'm a stickler for starting on time. And um, we will not go past 9 o'clock. And um, there will be a break in the middle. So I want to make sure that um, we are prepared to um, ask the questions, study the book, and make sure that we get questions in on a timely fashion so that we can be very efficient with this process. So um, I don't think we're going to have a problem, but I just want to make sure that everyone knows that um, I'm going to be very <coughs> to the book, and we're just going to move through the process and answer all the questions that we need to answer. And I will work very closely with Mr. Panos um, to make sure that um, his caucus is on board and making sure that all their questions are being answered as well, so. Thank you. Any other pressing concerns, statements? Okay. Uh, the next item is um, the pub what's called the public forum on the budget, um, which is limited to 30 minutes. And Alexis, is, I, it's really going to be treated similar to an audience to visitor where people have three minutes, and the focus is, is to be on items that uh, um, have to do with the budget. There will be an, a regular audience to visitor um, uh, 
um, at item number six on the agenda. We're now at item number four. So if you could read uh, the audience to visitor script. Good evening. This is Alexis Shack from the superintendent's office. If there is anyone from the public who would like to address the board, you may do so in two different ways. If you are using the Zoom application on your mobile device or computer, you may enter your comments into the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the Zoom menu bar. Or you may raise your hand on your computer if your device has a microphone by selecting the participants icon on the Zoom menu bar and then clicking raise hand or by dialing star nine on your phone. You'll be given three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. When you are called on, you'll be promoted to panelist. After you make your comments, you will return to attendee status. For clear communication, we ask that you do not place the call on speakerphone. No comments can be made against the employees of the school district or children outside of your own. Thank you. Um, and for those who are in the room, um, <laughs> when you get to two and a half minutes, I'll have Mr. Lockhart raise a red card briefly. When we get to three minutes, he'll raise the red card and, and hold it, um, uh, meaning please wrap up your, your comments. Um, if people are calling in or on Zoom, um, Mr. Lockhart may have to break in at that two and a half minute mark to, to let you know you need to start winding up and again at the three minutes to say, uh, please conclude your remarks. Um, so at this point in time, I'd like to start, I, I understand there may be a problem with uh, the Zoom at this point, so I'd like to start with people who are uh, in the audience who'd like to address the board regarding the proposed budget. Don't all jump up at once. Anybody online on the phone line? <coughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. My name is Brandon Jubry. Uh, I live at thirty four Jubry Drive. Uh, good evening. I'm here uh, tonight on behalf of the Windsor Travel Basketball Program uh, to appeal to the board uh, regarding the facility rental policy here in town. Uh, I've been a resident in Windsor for almost 40 years. During that time, I've been involved in youth sports here in town, either as a participant, a, uh, a coach, or in a leadership role. Among other roles, uh, currently I'm the coach, a coach, and the director of the Windsor Travel Basketball Program. The program is run by me, two other gentlemen who are also volunteers. Uh, we also get support from the, the children's parents in town who are part of the program. The Travel Basketball Program offers an opportunity for children in Windsor to compete at a higher level beyond what the recreational programs in town uh, offer and serves as a feeder program to the Windsor High School basketball program. More importantly, the program instills confidence, accountability, teamwork, work ethic, and focuses on building success successful students in the classroom and positive contributors to their homes and society. There is currently no other basketball program in town like this. Currently, the Windsor Travel Basketball Program is home to approximately 30 kids between uh, the grades of six and eight who live in Windsor. The program is funded entirely by registration fees paid by the parents, fundraisers, and donations. The program is run at a break-even point financially, even with the fundraising efforts and the small amount of donations that we receive. Currently, our program is being treated as a non-Windsor program. Because of this, we are being charged an hourly rental fee when using the Windsor High School's gym for home games. This translates into roughly $1,400 uh, as a cost to the season, uh, to the program per season. This is $1,400 that our program does not have. To put it into perspective, last year we played 100% of our home games at our opponent's gyms because we could not afford to play in Windsor. So I'm here to ask the more members of the board that you please rec reconsider your current policy 
and treat our program as you would any other town program. Given that our kids, parents, and volunteers are all residents of Windsor, I see no reason why it would not be. Treating our program as a town-based program would save our Windsor families approximately $1,400 excuse me, $1,400 annually and significantly improve the viability of our program. Additionally, this could possibly be the difference between a child being able to participate or not. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the room like to address the board? Alexis, is anybody online or uh, on the phone? Mr. President, there is no one um, with their hands raised or any Q&As in the question feature. Um, are, are we able to Mr. President, are we able to confirm that we're actually connected via Zoom to make sure that no one's not um, excluded from this process? I'm looking for our, our, our tech support. So it looks like it requires a webinar passcode. I believe that if I were to end the Zoom, I can't edit it while the Zoom's going on. So if I end the Zoom, edit the thing so it removes the passcode and start it again, no one will need to use the passcode to log in. Mr. President, yep. make a motion to end the Zoom and start it again as folks are not able to get in and participate. Is there a second? <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Yeah, I, I, I'd like the recommendation that um, basically what we're doing is going into a recess yeah. until we can confirm that we're disconnected and then reconnected and then pick back up where we are, which is audience to visitors for the virtual piece. So in agreement, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Abstention. Motion carries 9-0-0. We're in a brief recess. President, are we able to confirm that we are now live? I'm hoping the answer is a head of a nod, uh, nod of a head, we are, we are live. Uh, apologize for that uh, technical problem. Um, uh, we're told that this is being broadcast on Win TV and that the Zoom is up, but you may have to, if anybody's listening on their phone, you may have to type in the, the ID for the meeting um, and not just click on a link. Um, and for those who, who uh, missed the PowerPoint that was done, it's my understanding that it should be uh, tomorrow on the website of Windsor Public Schools, hopefully both the PowerPoint and, and the book itself uh, for people to, to see. So at this point, I'm gonna ask uh, Alexis, is there anybody on the phone or a uh, Zoom or whatever. Uh, Mr. President, at this time, there are no individuals with their hand raised and there are no questions in the Q&A feature. Last call for anybody in the boardroom. Seeing and hearing none, so without objection, I'll close the public forum on the budget and 
Uh, according to what we posted, we will now have a five-minute recess, and I say be here promptly at five in five minutes. 7.15. So at 7.15, we're adjourned at 7.10 in recess. Get some more. Item is item number five, recognitions and acknowledgments. We have a recognition uh, for Abigail Morgan Vial, Board of Education representative. This is her last meeting and we wanna honor her here. So if you could come up and Dr. Hill will present, give you, present you with a certificate. Hey, be yourself. That's going to be me in about five, six years. <laughs> You ready for a motion, Mr. President? Yeah. Mr. President, I have two motions, sir. Yeah, recognizing Mr. Lockhart. First motion is I move that the Board of Education add the following agenda item to tonight's meeting. Discussion of student dress code with possible vote to have policy committee revise the student dress code to add that pants or trousers be worn around the waist and that no underwear will be visible nor any part of the buttocks or genitals is visible, end quote, with anticipated action, in parentheses. Is there a second? I have a second. And because we are adding this um, to the agenda, this does require a two-thirds vote. Any further discussion? Any discussion about it? Yes, I, I'd like to bring up the fact that um, this, this topic um, properly was brought before us, but the timing of it would have been made it very difficult for the staff to post within the 24-hour time frame. So therefore, it, it was an agreement that we would bring it up under this format under two-thirds majority. But I wanted the public to know it was three people that, that agreed to this, but it, it did not get in enough time so that the staff can post it in a reasonable manner. We, we can discuss it under the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just, I was, um, I would like to see a, an amendment to the motion to include a broader discussion around the dress code policy. Okay, well, I think what, what's going to happen, this okay. is just to add this, so when we have that discussion, you can okay. talk about that, right. but part of that discussion will be combining this with whatever okay. Windsor High School, the Action Club, and maybe the School Governance Council comes up with and presents to us, so the policy committee would just have to meet uh, on, on everything that's presented regarding the dress code. Thank you. Okay, uh, without any and, and, and just And just, just will be placed, if this is approved, this will be item 10C on the agenda, yes, item 10C. You. We can add that because our agenda ended at 10B, number six, Paquanic School, yep. in the school report, so this will, this will be added as 10C if this passes. Mm -hmm. Are we ready for the vote on adding this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 
Abstention. Motion carries 9-0-0. Zero, zero. Next motion, Mr. Lockhart. Yes, I move that the Board of Education add an agenda item to tonight's meeting to go into executive session to discuss a matter involving confidential student records. I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Uh, is this regarding executive session, uh, to go into executive session? This also requires a two-thirds vote because we're adding it tonight. Any and questions or discussion? Yeah, the my own discussion is this will go between item 14 and 15. I believe we should do audience to visitors first and then go into executive session. And then when we come out of the executive session, we can handle any matters that may need to be done before adjournment. Good idea. So all those in favor of adding this item to going into executive session, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstention. Motion carries 9-0-0. Zero, zero. Item on the agenda is audience to visitor. This is a general audience to visitor time, not limited to the budget. Good evening. This is Alexa Shack from the superintendent's office. If there is anyone from the public who would like to address the board, you may do so in two different ways. If you are using the Zoom application on your mobile device or computer, you may enter your comments into the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the Zoom menu bar, or you may raise your hand on your computer if your device has a microphone by selecting the participants icon on the Zoom menu bar and then clicking raise hand or by dialing star nine on your phone. You'll be given three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. When you are called on, you'll be promoted to panelist. After you make your comments, you will return to attendee status. For clear communication, we ask that you do not place the call on speakerphone. No comments can be made against the employees of the school district or children outside of your own. Thank you. Again, I think um, I'll take folks that are here uh, in the boardroom if you'd like to address the board. And the same rules apply um, that Mr. Lockhart will raise a red card at the two and a half minute mark just to let you know to start winding down and at the three minute mark he'll hold it up and please at that point conclude your remarks for people uh, either phoning in or on zoom Mr. Lockhart will probably uh, have to say at least for the telephoners uh, that your two and a half minutes are there and then three minutes to be up so again if someone would like to address the board please come to the desk here Sonia Turner, 41 Becker Circle. I am a Windsor re resident, a taxpayer, and a parent. My daughter attends Windsor High School. She is an AB student and takes honor classes. Last year, she was inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. She was also diagnosed with social anxiety and depression. She is a good daughter, and I am honored to be her mother. On Thursday, January 5th, my daughter was assaulted in her math class. She was sitting at her seat when a student came up and hit her in the head. As a result, my daughter suffered a concussion and 14 days later, her symptoms are still severe. The Windsor High School Code of Conduct states that they promote a positive learning environment, including showing respect towards others, behaving in a responsible manner, obeying all school rules, including safety rules. Students are responsible for conducting themselves properly in a responsible manner. This conduct was not extended to my daughter, and my daughter's educational process was seriously disrupted, and the positive learning environment that Windsor High School is trying to promote was violated. The lack of communication with the school gave the appearance that my daughter was not a priority and that they did not care about her physical or mental well-being. I constantly kept reaching out to the school and I received one email and a phone call four days later. The school continues to deny my daughter a positive learning environment by keeping the aggressor in the classes with her. This is not a safe learning environment for my daughter. My daughter has been traumatized. Additionally, I had a conversation with a person at the high school this morning who made it seem like my daughter and I were lying about the incident or the fact that this student is always putting her hands on my daughter. I was told that we need to move forward and not dwell in the past. How can I move forward when every day I'm witnessing the results of what happened to my child? 
I entrusted the Windsor Public School System to educate my daughter, allow her to have fun learning, help her develop friendships, to keep her safe, and to help her be a productive citizen. The trust is broken. When I took my daughter to the hospital, the doctor began to discuss what a concussion was and the symptoms it could present. That is when my mind began to go into what if statements. What if my daughter had a brain bleed? What if my daughter had a fractured skull? What if my daughter did not wake up Friday morning? Who would have thought that a, their child could sustain a concussion while sitting in math class? The Windsor High School Student Handbook states that it wants to promote a positive, safe, and non-disruptive learning environment. Are these words just written in a handbook, or are they meant for the students to live by? We have, have the students seen or even read the handbook? We cannot turn a blind eye to what is happening in the schools. No student or parent should have to endure what my daughter and family has. So I leave you to think about this. What if what happened to my daughter happened to your child while in school? Thank you for your remarks. Anyone else like to address the board who's in the boardroom? Alexis, anybody online? Mr. President, there are no individuals with their hands raised and there are no questions in the Q&A feature. Without objection from the board, I'll close audience to visitor. Audience to visitor is closed. The next item is the consent agenda and are there any items that board members wish to pull? Food service report. Food service report. Yeah. Anything else anybody wants pulled? Present. Seeing, hearing, none. Is there a motion? President, I move that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda items 7A, 7B, and 7D, which is financial, enrollment, and human resources report. Is there a second? Yes. Motion made by Mr. Pa uh, Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor of approving 7A, 7B, and 7D say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstention, motion carries 9-0-0. Do we have another motion, Mr. Lockhart? Move the Board of Education approve consent agenda item 7C, food services report. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Uh, discussion, Mr. Panos? Yes, uh, um, this is the expenses. The net income is 109000 <clears throat> And we now have an opening, uh, opening balance, 1836 That is a cushion of, uh, or what is the, um, Status of, of the, I mean, it looks like we make uh, we make quite a bit of profit per month. Is is that what is happening here? So this is only due to all of the um, reimbursement from the federal government the past year and a half. So that's why um, we have so much money. Um, we've been trying to spend it down, um, but because of all of the back orders on deliveries, we have, you know, we have purchased freezers, walk-in coolers that were needed um, because we can't carry this large of a balance per federal guidelines. Um, but again, we can't get the actual equipment in to our school, so we can't expend it yet. But this is not something we would normally, we don't make this yeah. kind of money. Yeah, I haven't seen these numbers. Yeah, it's it's all because of all of the federal reimbursement we've been receiving for giving free food. And what do you expect to happen um, with this? Does this have this has no no budget implications or anything like that or, or no. money? No, and um, we can't. It's a, a slush fund that we could use. <laughs> no, and we can't we can't use it to help offset uh, negative balances either. The the federal government won't let us. Okay, so it's with, yeah, and so we return 
money? What, what do we do? No, we don't return. So we utilize it within the food service department. So we have purchased uh, a few freezers and walk-in coolers. So okay. this number is just waiting for the deliveries to come in because it's everything okay, on so back that, order. Okay, so that's what that, okay. It'd, it'd probably take up a lot of this yeah. money. Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? The, um, uh, just uh, give us an idea here, remind me again, the accounts receivable, I see here 110,000. So what, what uh, that's not sales. That is money that we receive from who? I'm talking about December. Uh, if you go up to the top there, December two, uh, 2022, um, it was 100, 110,063, 82. What um, accounts receivable? I guess I guess I'm just trying to just remind me what 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 is that item? So that is um, anything above what we, re um, it's, see how it's reimbursement state account receivable. So that is the money from um, oh, that's, that's our, part re of the okay, our reimbursements, re right. State account. Okay, so they're, re they're, re they're giving us for each student or something? Yeah, so anytime, anytime a student goes through the lunch line, they punch in their number. If that student is free or reduced okay we receive a portion of that money back okay yep so, um, and and what and could you explain the miscellaneous rebates and grants here just to top it off just below that few. <coughs> so these would be um, grants that we receive um, more more donation type, um, re no, not reimbursements. It's more donations that we receive. Sometimes we receive if we put depending on how large our milk order is, we will get a uh, reimbursement check okay. um, after they deliver depending on the supply versus the demand. Okay, this is from generally from suppliers that we, we right. purchase things. Right, Okay. But we you. also receive, you know, gr I don't want to, they're not grants because I, I know, I don't want people to think it's grants from the state or feds, but we do receive grants for, um, or donations from companies um, oh. for um, different uh, initiatives that we do with all the healthy food, you mean like the healthy food, plate. Food companies mainly? Or? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions regarding this item? <clears throat> okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstention. Motion carries 9 0 0. item is approval of minutes. Hi. I move the Board of Education approves the minutes of the December 20th, 2022 special meeting and the December 20th, 2022 regular meeting. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Ms. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion on either of those minutes? These are, um, wait a minute. Oh, that's a public forum. I'm sorry. Yeah, we have another one. We had a special meeting, didn't we? That was earlier in the month. The presentation. Oh, we did. Okay, we have. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm sorry. Not seeing any other comments. All those in favor of approving the minutes on December 20th. 2022 special meeting and December 2022 regular meeting. Say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstention. Motion carries 9 0 0. Next, we have a student representative report. Good evening. For this is my final meeting as the student representative, I would like to thank the Board of Education for the opportunity to represent my peers. It has been a pleasure and true honors my peer entrusted me with such a task. 
The dress code survey collecting data from students, faculty and staff, and community members has been sent out and is collecting valuable data from our Windsor Public Schools community. Of the 211 current responses, 67.8% are from students, 30% are from district employees, including teachers, paraeducators, administrators, administrative assistants, and SEL spe specialist, custodial staff, school counselors, tutors, a PSES teacher, and security. The remainder are from community members and parents. Student responses show a desire for the dress code to be reviewed and altered. Only 7.7% of responding students chose no change. Students noted the reasoning behind the desire for change. Many students cited racism in certain items, especially 1B, as restricting do-rags and bonnets restricts cultural headwear worn predominantly by African-American students, and that particular headwear is mostly used for the protection of hairstyles and hair types of people of color. Beyond this, students responded that the background of why certain items were implemented is rooted in racism, as assuming gang affiliation from do-rags and bonnets targets African-American students and unjustly connects them with gang affiliation. Many students also cited gender inequality within the dress code, particularly items 1I and 1K. Students stated that most boys don't wear items that are listed in the dress code, therefore the code itself targets young women. Many female students also noted that the dress code causes them to feel sexualized. Students further cited inequity in the enforcement based on body type and in female identifying students with larger chests are dress coded disproportionately. Beyond inequities, many students mentioned that it often gets cold in the school, those with health, sh health issues such as low iron and anemia are especially affected, and therefore students should be able to wear outerwear which is not permissible under item 1A. Many students agreed that the rule for no hoods or full face covers on account of security, but believe hats, caps, head headscarves, athletic headbands, and bandanas should be allowed, as it does not detract from a learning environment and they are often used to keep warm when the school is cold or as a form of self-expression. Across a broad range of student responses, an idea of what should remain in the dress code was formed. The consensus was do not cover the full face, no nudity or visible private parts, no visible undergarments, and no symbols or images that promote illegal activity. District employees also exhibited a desire for dress code revision. Of the respondents, only 23.3% chose no change. District employees also cited racial, gender, and body type discrimination within the dress code. Many respondents had a similar opinion that item 1B is discriminatory against those of African American descent and headwear should extend past religion to cultural needs. Many concurred that item 1I targets a young woman and those with larger chests, and both 1J and 1K exhibit sexism. Respondents also mentioned they felt as though the dress code sexualizes girls, which makes them uncomfortable with enforcing it. Employees also remarked that the building is often cold, therefore outerwear and certain headwear should be permitted. Multiple employees responded that bans on hats and headwear cause more disruptions to learning than permitting students to wear these items, and so as long as the items do not cover the ears or full face, many are okay with headwear. The responses of the employees show a similar idea to the students of what the dress code should include. The dress code should ban full face coverage for identification purpose, hoods in order to see headphones, nudity, visible private parts, and visible undergarments. Of eight community members, only two chose no change. Otherwise, community members cited sexism and discrimination by body type and remarked that outerwear should be permitted when it is cold. Beyond the dress code itself, both students and faculty displayed discomfort with enforcement of the dress code. Of 54 students who have been dress coded, 35 fe felt very uncomfortable or uncomfortable, 14 felt neutral. Of 104 students who witnessed someone being dress code, 30, 63 replied it made them very uncomfortable or uncomfortable, 30 felt neutral. Of 35 employees, 12 said dress coding student, a student made them very, feel very uncomfortable, 13 felt neutral. Many employees responded they felt uncomfortable dress coding students. Some reported the uncomfort stemmed from feeling as though they were racially profiling. Others reported they did not feel comfortable regarding female dress to check whether inappropriate or appropriate. Many employees reported that they may not dress code someone as it causes an issue, whereas the mode of dress of the student does not. Some employees answer that there would not be follow through if they did dress code the student. Students and faculty also agree that the dress code is not fairly enforced. 94 of 143 students answered that they don't believe that the dress code is fairly enforced. 39 were unsure. Only 10 students answered that the dress code was fairly enforced. Of responding district employees, 90% responded that they did not believe the dress code was fairly enforced. Across the three response categories, most respondents believe that the dress code is outdated and should be reviewed to be more equitable and with the times. 
multiple students and employees expressed interest in providing input to revise and update the dress code. This district believes in student and community involvement in policy, evidenced by my own position, students, staff, and parents on the School Governance Council, and student involvement in implementing SEL within the district. This belief and involvement should extend to the dress code, a policy which directly affects students, educators, administrators, parents, and the community as a whole. The data displays that the majority of those in the Windsor Public Schools desire a change. I implore the Board of Education to listen to our voices. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else to add? I mean, that was all on the dress code, or if, if you have anything else that... Questions for Abby? Well, the question, uh, I just wonder if you could share the, the written things with us because you were speaking a bit rapidly for some of us. Who <laughs> okay. Good. Other questions? Um, in, in, I'm wondering, uh, I think you, you were a member of the, the Action Club. Do you know, again, this is unfair since if you haven't been actively involved with them, but do you know um, whether or not that's going to go to the School Governance Council? And I don't know if Nathan or <coughs> Ayana, if you either of you know, because uh, I'm just thinking of a timeline. If we're tr unfortunately, you're graduating. <laughs> but if we're trying to do something potentially for next year, and we are already talking about another item on, on the dress code being sent to that would probably be sent to policy. Uh, it would be good for that, for whatever the school comes up with, and I know Mr. Parker left, but um, that it would be good to get something from the school in, in a time that's reasonable that the policy committee may have a lot of work to do. It may be more than one policy meeting on this, or members might feel we need a input from the public as well as a, in a special meeting about this if we're gonna make significant changes, so. Um, you said that this is the second time that you've mentioned this. Um, the last time also, you, um, it, it seems that there's a lot of thought that the dress code as it is is not being enforced. Is that is that accurate? So, okay, and now part of this is also that you've, they, they mentioned that the, the dress code is out of date. Uh, did that include the suggestion to wear outer garments, you know, um, I mean, uh, co coats, shoes, is, 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 that, is that what they're thinking, that, that 20 years ago they didn't, they didn't get cold or, or, or you had too much air conditioning now or what? I believe that directly correlates with um, item 1I, 1J, and 1K, and 1B. Um, as I had before mentioned, both district employees and students mentioned that they felt multiple items had racial discrimination and sexual discrimination, as well as discrimination by body type. I believe that is the not with the times portion. I, J, and K are where? I'm sorry, where? Of the board of ed policy. Yeah. Oh, oh, in the, oh, in the yes. policy, okay, if, I'm sorry. Um, at yeah. the beginning of this meeting, I handed out graphs, and if you look at the very oh, back page of the right. graph, it has everything listed. Yeah. <coughs> So, yeah, I have it. Let's see. 
Okay, so they. So, for example, you, you, you say that wearing see through clothing is uh, discriminatory? That is not one of the idea uh, items that they found discriminatory. That is simply something that they uh, said they wouldn't mind seeing changed. Okay. Hill, I think you stole my graph. You said I gave yeah. case. Yeah. No, I need my witness. She pushed it back to me. Now I stole it. <laughs> so, uh, it's item nine. Uh, wait a minute. The, the number nine. Okay, on the graph? Yeah, in the back. Oh. Okay. Yes, there's an, uh, yeah, the I entire understand. Uh, dress code is I, I outlined was, on the legend in the back. was referring to IJs and Ks, and now we're talking to numbers, right? right? Oh, okay, well, yep. i got to stay with you, you know. Sure. I apologize. When I was creating the graphs, the formatter would not let me put in uh, letters. Instead, it made me do item one, item two. Okay. So, so the item is shirts. Sure Shirts or blouses that reveal the abdomen, chest, cleavage, or undergarment. Yes, they found this discriminatory specifically by um, body type. So they found that disproportionately students uh, who are female identifying with larger chests are dress coded very much more often under this particular item than other students might be. They also found that this item is almost always used to dress code females instead of males as well. Right, well, undergarments also, well, I can, I, I can see what you, why you say the shirts and blouses, but it's just that, uh, but we're going to address this a little bit, uh, a little bit later, you know, that, that we, uh, it's, it's very good that you brought that topic up uh, last, last meeting. Ms. Cantor, did you, you had your hand raised, was that, okay. you're okay. I think you were trying to help explain where things were. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wollaston. Uh, I just wanted to say this is a very good presentation overall. Did some hard work here. And um, <coughs> it's very commendable because you didn't, we didn't pay you. To, you didn't get paid to do this. You know? <laughs> um, a lot of people wouldn't do this for free. So. Um, and uh, Mr. Panos, I will send out the data to each person on the board. Thank you. Other comments about the report? Um, Mr. Holden Lockhart, no. She's going she's to send the data and she's going to send yep. the actual written report so everybody the written can write to the yeah. committee. So yep. That's all I want. Mr. Wa Mr. Wollison? And you also did a good job being non biased and speaking from a just a middle ground standpoint. So kudos for that as well. And uh, I think uh, we all applaud the work that you've done, um, not only on this, but um, uh, throughout how you brought student views and, and not just your own to, to us. That's very important for us to have representatives that, that do that. And um, I know uh, we wish you very much success, and especially on this dress code, I know you were working when I was on the School Governance Council and you had brought it up, but not to be able to hopefully see the, the fruits of your labor, but thank you so much for your service to us. Any other comments? No. Knowing that this is exam week, midterm week, uh, clearly feel free to, to go. You're probably exempt from it. Thank you. You're all, always welcome to. But I was—I was thinking this time you were really ready to go out. Wait a minute. They corrected already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are really. Uh, I'm He's getting ready to prepare for next time. Yes. <laughs> next item on the agenda is the. Uh, Board of Education's the President's Report. Um, happy 2023 to whoever is still listening in the public uh, and to all my board members and the staff here. Um, uh, hope, hope
folks have enjoyed their December break that they had, and I know everybody's already <coughs> back, back at it, working hard. Um, we have the superintendent's proposed budget tonight. He's been working on with the staff. The board has just seen and heard the budget for the first time, and um, we've set, as we've mentioned before, a number of committee <laughs> meetings we'll discuss that we'll be having, and so there's more opportunity for uh, public comment. Because of a problem we had with Zoom, uh, we may be having the superintendent uh, reprise his uh, uh, report that he gave earlier tonight so more people can, can <coughs> see that. But as I mentioned earlier, it hopefully will be up tomorrow on the Board of Education website, both the PowerPoint and the uh, entire budget book. Uh, Mr. Panos, uh, Mr. Wollaston, Ms. Taylor and I attended the Martin Luther King Jr. ceremony on Monday, sponsored by the Archer Memorial MAE -E -A -E -A -E Zion Church at Town Hall. We had an opportunity to introduce ourselves uh, to the audience. Uh, the incredible keynote speaker, <laughs> probably wonder why I didn't mention that he was there, uh, was uh, uh, Vice President here, Leonard Lockhart, who told his truth and shared his wisdom with us. Uh, there were also we had four Sage Park students who were selected who inspired us with their perspectives on the power of youth and young people in the fight for civil rights and social justice. Uh, also in attendance were State Representative Jane Garibay, Miriam Kahn, and Bobby Gibson, and from the Town Council, Nushet Black Burke. I know it may be mentioned later on, but Sage Park uh, has a VEX IQ robotics competition this Saturday that's open to the public at Sage Park, and uh, their team will be teams will be competing there. Also, First Robotics is holding a competition at Sage Park on Saturday, February first, fourth. Sorry, that concludes my report. Any questions? Seeing and hearing none, we'll go into school liaison reports. First for the high school, Ms. Taylor and Mr. Wallace. One thing Dave's going to do, he's going to tell you about the robotics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. I love it. Your son sometimes participates. He does. I'm excited about it, too. It's awesome. Okay. Um, it was already mentioned, but it's uh, the midterm exams are being taken this week uh, by our high school students, um, wishing them well. Um, it was very busy in the middle of the two exams. I had to go pick up my child <laughs> because when they're done, they're done. They want to go. Um, but wishing them all well and, and rest and all those things. Um, there's one thing that I want, wanted to, to lift up, and people may have seen it in the news, and um, some people may have uh, witnessed it um, at the game on Monday. Um, I just want to personally, as a Board of Education member um, for Windsor, uh, to denounce the violence that has been happening at high school sports games. Um, I personally am disgusted by adults acting like children and um, putting other people and families and our athletes in danger. Um, I think there's um, something to be said about going to a sports game in or your local town or uh, high school and being safe and feeling safe or dropping your child off and, and them feeling safe or having your child play and them feeling safe. Um, I'm not saying this is a Windsor thing. It is not. It's been in the news, and it's been kind of going on um, for quite some time. But I think it's time for adults. If you cannot be an adult, you should not be in our schools watching our children play if you're not able to, to remain calm and, and let the children play. So I just want to personally denounce any violence um, that comes into our schools, especially our school gyms. Um, and I'll let Nathan take it from there. Oh uh, yeah, as Ms. Taylor said, I think, I believe there's been um, three or four altercations across the state, just not not in Windsor, but just across various schools just in the past few days. So I would just piggyback off of that and even vouch to parents to say, if you can't be there with your student to really supervise them, or if you can't really trust your student outside of the the your supervision in that gym, then they really shouldn't be there by themselves because we don't need to um, have anyone else being in an unsafe situation. And it boils down to how we are um, sending our kids out and what our kids are doing when they're out and how adults are conducting themselves as well. But um, to end on a more positive note, good luck to all our students who are testing this week. 
parents try to be as supportive as they can to the students during this stressful and high anxiety time. No one likes standardized tests or tests of any form <laughs> as they are not fun, but I'm sure we all can do great because we're all Windsor kids. You know, we got the best of the best here. Thank you. Questions for Windsor High School? Questions for Windsor High School reps here? Seeing and hearing none. Sage Park. Jeremy, we'll have you start. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, on uh, January January 25th is going to be the Acquire concert um, from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, performers, um, 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 if you're performing, um, that night, um, you should be arriving at Sage at a park at, at a six uh, thirty. Um, January twenty sixth is a uh, um, um, a uh, parental information uh, meeting regarding the uh, the uh, Cape Cod trip in the auditorium. Um, and as uh, President Fury uh, mentioned, um, on Saturday, fe February fourth, is going to be the uh, the uh, robotics competition at Sage Park. Um, um, Tuesday, February 7th um, is a professional development day. Um, there will be no school that day. Um, February 8th is the uh, seventh grade uh, con content night. And I uh, um, also wanted to mention um, um, our Sage Park um, a woodworking class was was in the uh, news recently. Um, 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 it, uh, featured on on on, on a, a news eight. Um, they were um, uh, working on, on some great great uh, skills um, 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 in in woodworking that they can um, you know not only use now but in the future, in the future as well, and I, I just thought it was a great piece, and I wanted to share it with all of you. That's all I have for Sage Park. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Clay. I just wanted to add. I know there's been a lot of um, interest in tech ed um, in the high school level, but I wanted to point out that really that a lot of that program of study starts in the middle school as well. And so if you just Google it, you can see how much strength and base is built up in the middle school. So I wanted to draw the public's attention to that. And also, as difficult as this week can be for our students, it's also difficult for the families. And so I just want to tell everybody, please see health, take um, health and wellness as a serious matter while you try to get your students prepared for their tests and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Sage Park? <clears throat> okay. Next school is Clover Street School, Mr. Lockhart. Nothing to report, just want to remind parents to <coughs> read the Friday update that Clover Street sends the emails out to the parents, and if you want anything that's live time, make sure you go to the website on the, the Clover Street um, school page, and you can grab updates from there as well. It was great to see Miss Lee in attendance from mm -hmm. Clover Street for for MLK celebration at, at Town Hall. John F. Kennedy, Ms. Cantor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, a staffing update: They had a fifth grade teacher resign in December. I'm not sure I can pronounce the last name right. It's Mr. Tatishi or Tatishai, and they are going to be looking for a teacher to replace that fifth grade at the, the beginning of the year and also Miss Friedis is going to be going on maternity leave March 1st and they're looking to find a long-term substitute to teach the students um, also we had a presentation in the fall about the students learning and what they were doing to um, be better focused on their education so they said that they're going to continue to work in PLC on data analysis and conversations around instructional practice and focus on the small groups, group groups, uh, progress monitoring of students in needed levels of support, 
and they do have a vacancy in each area. It's down in ELA in grade five, and Sonia and Sue, who are the instructional coaches, are going to be supporting assigned subs and teaching in that area. Um, Saturday detention reminder, JFK administration, working along with Sage Park, will begin to use a Saturday detention mo uh, model for consequences of students with behavioral program problems. And um, tomorrow night, the JFK Strings and Van concert will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. And there is a uh, JFK PTO meeting on February 6th from 6 to 7. And I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or statements on JFK? Just an update that you probably wouldn't know because you don't have a J JFK student, but we got a text message that um, Dr. Pierce is under the weather. They're going to okay. go on ahead and reschedule okay, thank for you. no problem at all. It just came through in the last, yeah. Uh -huh, I know, me too. I was going to go too. I was going to go too. Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking, yep, straight off the, the hotline here. Um, it's being rescheduled for Monday the 23rd at 6 in the cafetorium. I always the love that word, cafetorium. Is it the gym? Any, any other questions or statements <laughs> regarding JFK? <laughs> thank you. Oliver Ellsworth. Ms. Galinsky. Yes, thank you. Um, so I have a few updates. Um, as you know, they finally started the Watchdogs program, and apparently it has been very successful so far. They've had some great participation, and I have to give my husband a little bit of a shout out because Stephen Glinsky has volunteered twice so far and has been with both of my children in preschool and second grade. So my daughter did not like that. My son loved it. So, you know, you get what you got. Um, so a couple of things coming up tomorrow is the OESGC meeting. It's virtual, so please everyone attend if you can. And then they also are having a self-care night, which is next week. And I believe it's next Tuesday, the 24th. I'm sorry, the 26th. It actually sounds pretty incredible, and I think it's great for these kids to learn, like, what is self-care, whether it's hygiene, taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, anything of that nature. I think it's great for anyone to attend. Um, on a slightly different topic, there is a kindergarten student that has come down with a very serious illness, and so... Uh, the school, Oliver Ellsworth, and the PTO have joined together, as well as the police department. Um, they have fundraised uh, a little bit of money to help this family out. And then the PTO has actually started up what we call like a meal train to kind of help this family out. And so if anyone actually wants to help, I believe it's open to anyone to help provide a meal for this family once a week. And if you are interested, you can email chelsea.j.dow at gmail.com, or simply you can reach out to Mr. Wood, who is the assistant principal, and he can guide you in the right direction. Um, but we are just trying to help out this family who is in some very serious need right now. So thank you. Thank you for your report, and sorry, so sorry to hear that, however. Any questions for OE? Oh, absolutely. I guarantee the family would be up for it. And they seem, I have not personally spoken with them, but they seem very grateful for any sort of help that the community is giving to them. Yes, I will. I can always email you and I can set you up with the right people. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next to Kwanik School, Kwanik. Mr. Panos. Everything is great. Next item. <laughs> 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 a booster thon has begun, and in just a couple of days, they raised thirty-five hundred dollars with just by exercises and stuff like that. This, this is quite something. We it's should amazing. Try that, it? We ought, we ought to do something <laughs> yeah. about. We so get we on would. this thing. We'll 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 take care of the budget. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'll be enough millions of dollars. <laughs> Money is coming in. This is uh, this will continue until January twenty-seventh, and they should have raised. They're probably going to raise well over twenty thousand dollars. Uh, nice. They're a big thing. Um, from Friday, they celebrated MLK Day with an assembly, music, singing, and everyone holding hands, and it's just a great, joyous thing. It was a, they had a great time. So the uh, uh, academically, they uh, uh, they the I Ready Diagnostics or 
scores have just been finished, and they expect to know the progress of the students since the beginning of the year and be able to project until the end, and they're, uh, uh, they're very encouraged. Um, and um, they have a STEAM thing, a STEM kind of program with the kids uh, they, uh, where Loomis Chafee students come down and, um, and help the kids do, you know, reading and science activities. So they say, so uh, the kids love it, they say, and they, um, they would like to get some uh, Windsor High School students to participate and uh, help, and so you can take that down to them. There's a, there's a sign-up sheet for the Pequannock School to do this, and the kids will probably enjoy it quite a bit. Um, the Monday, February 6th, will be PTO meeting, um, and in February we will have our own watchdogs, not quite as many as uh, the lineup that was uh, mentioned by Oliver Ellsworth here, but um, they, um, they will be uh, doing the breakfast, the pancake breakfast for a little bit. Anyway, that's the report. Questions for Pequannock? Ms. Cantor. Thank you, President Fury. I was just wondering if you know if Loomis Chafee still mentors students at the elementary grade levels for strings because they used to do that and it's a great opportunity. For strings. Yeah, right. because they have one on one with their Loomis mm. students. Yeah. Would, and there would be, be some great. during the week, and it's such a wonderful opportunity. I know we received an email a long time ago from Dr. Pierce when my son was taking that, and it's really nice having someone, you know, closer in age teach than a, you know, an older adult going to a lesson because they're not always interested. But the younger students, they seem to show more initiative and learn differently from them. I think it's a great opportunity. They still have that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll ask her. Good for Loomis, yeah. And, you know, uh, on the morning announcements uh, for Windsor High School, I think they continuously talk about opportunities over at Pequannock to come and, and mentor. So I know that um, hopefully people are signing up for that because they keep reminding them it's five community service hours mm -hmm. if you volunteer, but you have to commit, I think, for, for uh, five different days to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Next item is an item that we've added, yep. item 10C, and is there a motion? Yep. I move that the policy committee take up the dress code item presented and that we expect this to be done along with a recommendation on dress code for Windsor High, High School. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Uh, would someone like to speak to start the discussion on this? Sure. Um, well, we've often heard about um, this uh, particular issue. Uh, we don't know how frequently it's done. Uh, we're talking about the way some students wear their pants. This seems to be a style. I mean, I, I recall the first time I heard about this, but probably about 30 years ago. I think so, this was far more in vogue, I think, in the 90s. As I didn't really, you know, I didn't think it was carried on, but. Um, I was rather surprised to hear that the style uh, grew out of the penitentiary <laughs> system. Um, it's not, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, I think it's a form of machismo or whatever that just derives from the fact that people in penitentiaries are not allowed to have belts. And <laughs> is that right? So, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of indecent um, uh, and, and it could, well be covered in what is currently said that you, you, you're not supposed to expose undergarments, though I suppose we could say that that was uh, a line intended mainly for female uh, uh, wear, but uh, you know, someone could certainly carry it under there, so it's kind of surprising that they're not doing it, you know, probably, probably some of it is that, you know, they're told to bring up, put up their pants or whatever that, and then, you know, walk around the corner and bring them, you know, just go back to it. So I, I think that it will be helpful if we made it explicit um, and just to make sure that the boys understand that, that they can't be do it, doing this sort of thing. It, it, it really uh, is sort of, uh, it is covered under policy. The policy is not that old. It is not that old fashioned. It says, you know, uh, dress uh, should be, Modest, in other words, in, 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 there is a 
I, um, uh, what is the, 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 the particular thing on it is uh, anything that is not clean or modest and appropriate to school situation. This is uh, when we write a policy, it's in general terms, and then you look down at the IAR, of course, with a more uh, specific. Um, and one could say here that item K, as you were talking about, talks about revealing the undergarment, but this is a, this is a matter of where they wear it. So I think we, I think it will help us if we, uh, if we something put something more specific. So told the, you know, the the policy committee come in with something more specific about, you know, uh, indecent, you know, put something in the policy part of it uh, about the way they wear their, you know, that the, the wear the way they wear uh, should be decent, uh, and make a suggestion for AR. That would go along with that. I so said to make sure that, um, in a manner, anything that re reveals, you know, underwear on the garments. And I think you you put it very well in the, in your motion. Thank you. Any other comments on this? I, again, this is really to send this to policy, and my hope is that between all the work that Abby has done and the work that the action committee um, is currently doing, will be able to address all the issues regarding dress code. Mr. Wollaston. Uh, yes, yeah, so as it is, as the motion stands, I don't think I'd be in support of sending this to policy just because um, cracking down on, yeah. I wear my pants at waist level <laughs> and I believe I wear pants at waist level, but I don't support sending something to policy that's going to crack down on predominant, predominantly black kids who are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, let's uh, crack down on sagging. If we're going to do as um, our student rep said, let's uh, address the whole entire dress code. Let's worry about the whole dress code. Let's try to re-envision the whole thing. But I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, guys, let's crack down on sagging because we know the population that it targets. And our student rep, a thing she brought up that was very profound is the discrimination within, within the implementation of this policy specifically. So if we decide here from this night that we're going to make it a big ticket item to crack down on sagging, who is that affecting? And how will this play out in the schools? Um, we've seen this time and time again with uh, various issues in society. And when you crack down on these certain issues, it targets a certain people, and I just, I'm, I, I, I can't in good faith, the way the motion stands, support this motion. Um, yeah, as as the student rep said, there there is many issues within, or there there is many issues that could be addressed. Um, as she spoke as well, certain policies are only addressed to women. I mean, certain parts of the policy only really get enforced on women of certain body types, but then this part of the policy, if we decide that we're really gonna crack down it, it's only gonna really affect black kids, if we're being honest, and I'm, I'm not in support of that. I, I'm wondering if there's a happy medium here. Um, uh, we have the maker and the seconder of, of the motion regarding um, something along the lines um, regarding uh, this, you know, this makes it seem as, you know, I was taking this in a, in a broader context and not as literal as this is, that this was not a mandate for the policy committee to come up with something explicitly with this statement, but that they would consider this as a significant item to be looking at. And it may, they, part of this may, maybe it ends up being, to me, this would be broad enough to say it ends up being potentially something like this, but not identical to this. I don't know if the maker or the suggester set and seconder, how they interpret the, the, the strictness of, of, of the reading of this. I would, be in, Mr. Okay. I would be in support of a more broad take to this. Mr. Lockhart. Thank you, Mr. President. So I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Wilson. Um, I made the motion so that we can start discussion number one. Um, number two, I, I do agree that this has the potential to target um, any group of kids. 
I'm not going to be specific, but it, it's it's very, very subjective rather than objective, in my opinion. So I believe that this is going to allow the committee to look at it from a broad view and then make any recommendations. I definitely would not support any recommendations that would target any group of kids, whether male, female, based off their religious belief or anything like that. I, w I would never do that. Um, but there appears to be an issue um, that's perceived or actually real. And what I would like to see is if, if we actually do have a policy in place, is it being enforced? So if it's something actually there that needs enforcement, then that's something that we can discuss with the superintendent and then we move forward. But um, I'm, I'm not in favor of looking at something that's going to create something that's more restrictive than, than what we currently have. Now, do we need to make it more current to today's times? That's something the policy can look at, discuss, and make an educated recommendation to um, the full board for discussion. So I'm looking for broad. I'm not looking for laser sharp targeting. But I do agree with Mr. Wilson that overall mm -hmm. that it could easily target one segment rather easily. What if we change the word revise to consider revising, which allows the policy committee to look at all these things and possibly reject all these things, but at least, and we know we're also waiting from the school to come up with su suggestions and then right. and go there. Um, I, w I would say, I, I would say to response to that, if I'm allowed, Mr. President, that um, just like any committee, the committee can make recommendations and then they can come before this board and they can be rejected. So it's just that I really don't want us doing committee work here. I just want to give us our overview of what we feel, <laughs> take it to committee, allow the committee to do their work, and then come back with the recommendation and, and, and move forth. That's, that's how I see the process. Ms. Clace and then Abby. So I just want to say that I think um, if the policy committee is going to take this matter up, I think we've, very, we've heard very clearly from the student voice and the faculty um, educator's voice and some parent voice that three, th they wanted a few things to happen. One, they wanted more input on the policy around the dress code and the Board of Education. Two, they wanted us to look at the Board of Education policy in its entirety. And so I would like us to not have a motion that just looks at one specific area, but just says to the policy committee, we'd like you to go back and revisit the Board of Education dress policy based on these factors and gathering input from those those people, those constituent groups, stakeholders that we need to, so that we're not um, sectioned to one area. And when we bring you back a policy revision or recommendation, it is more fully vetted and um, to say it might be just the same policy, but at least it's say we took a look at it and this is what we're recommending. So that would be my recommendation. However you need to amend the motion if you need to. Abby. I would agree with Ms. Clace and also Mr. President, you um, said maybe we could look for a happy medium. Perhaps if you specifically wanted to look at the pants policy, rather than making it a pants policy, you could specify what you mean by undergarments. That way it's not specifically targeting um, black and pers people of color um, students and perhaps that could be your happy medium. Well, first of all, I reject the idea that this is this targets just black. My son John used to <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, is that true? I mean, this is this is this has become a general thing among you know, so, so uh, the style is spread. So uh, it's it's just that uh, the the, um, the presentation that Abigail made last meeting uh, that. In the one case, they were not, they were, they were simply not um, enforcing anything about this. I mean, I think, I think the wording is broad enough that they could have said, well, it's an undergarment. All right, so how do you take that to mean? Well, it's still an undergarment. That's what's, that's what's being revealed. It's actually, and it's not modest in any way. So they could just look at the policy and, and follow it. So you, you, have enough, you have enough wording right now, but the data coming in is that it's not enforced or whatever. So the board has to be a little bit more specific in its policy and its AR. And I, I don't think that there's anything insulting in here. I mean, if we can, you know, uh, uh, you know, one would have to conclude that, that the presentation made last um, uh, month was uh, discriminatory. And I don't think that was the intent of the, of the presentation by the student rep. And so, you know, I, I, 
I don't think this makes um, you know all that much sense. You know, so we're, we're we we know this particular pro we have a particular problem, and all we're doing is adding to it. And they can do um, many other things if you, you find this. I mean, uh, with regard to let's say um, getting cold and wanting to wear coats. I mean, you, what you do is you wear a you wear a sweater in the winter time. That's you know you wear something that keeps you warmer. Uh, as I don't understand quite why you have to wear, um, you know, coats and things like that. And so, um, uh, you know, I think, but uh, I, I think it's important to emphasize this thing because it came to our attention that we know that this is a particular problem. So, yes, you can include it with the rest. Thank you. Ms. Cantor and then Mr. Howard. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to say that I know when my son was at the junior high, they were telling people to, you know, drop their pants, drop their sweatpants, and, oh, yes, mm -hmm. show their, at the junior high, they were telling them to drop their pants, wear them lower, show their undergarments. This happened when my son was there. It happened multiple times. Who? Mr. President, who? you? Yes. The students. I'm sorry. The well, students, students. I'm sorry. The uh, other students were oh. telling. I'm sorry. We're telling. Ms. Jorgensen was <laughs> I'm so <still> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Really? Call her no, and Where's Mrs. Jorgensen enforced it. You cannot do that. You can't. You have to wear your pants up higher. You can't expose your under underpants, your undergarments. And the same thing with students wearing see-through clothing. You can't do that. And it's in the policy. So I think the policy needs to be enforced. And it was all students. It just wasn't one student. It was all boys with their sweatpants. Can I just mention? Yes, Dr. Hill, and then. We're having fun. Um, so this is, we're going to vote on whether or not we're going to vote on Mr. Halleck. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm definitely in favor of sending, of, of sending this to the, the uh, policy committee. If you want to look at the whole policy, um, that's fine. But I definitely feel, I'm, I'm, I'm feel that the undergarment um, 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 issue needs to be addressed here. 
Um, I just feel I don't care if you're male, female. Um, I'm showing um, 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 undergarments is definitely inappropriate. I feel and shouldn't be um, 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 allowed. Um, also, I I think that uh, um, um, it's not. Um, 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 every student is um, um, has to follow this this policy. So I I I, uh, um, I don't feel that it's you know a, a racial or ac or anything like that um, 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 issue here because it's being um, um, enforced uh, throughout the district. So. Um, and that's, and that's Taylor, all I have to say right now. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Um, I think um, I just feel like she, she, Abby said what she said a couple of uh, meetings ago. And what we don't want to do is take the portions of what she said that resonates with us and decide that's cute. Mm -hmm. that, that makes me feel better. I'm going to choose because that's not the entirety of what she said. And I don't want to take this motion and run with it when this came about because the student said something bigger and then we're choosing a portion of a nibble of it to, to tackle. I think that's irresponsible on our part. Um, I'm not supporting this motion. I think unless we're going to edit it to say that we um, await what the group is going to send to us because they didn't say what they didn't ask anything yet. They're, she's still in data. Part, you know, and so I don't want to like throw anything to policy maybe just yet without the ask. I think it's just irresponsible. And it it was Mr. Panos. I was there in the 90s, and the guys everything was oversized. I wore my Nautica jacket every day. Never got dress coded because I was a good kid. But the squeaky wheel gets the grease, you know, get the grease. So the 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 unruly kid is gonna get dress coded. The 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 um. The girl who always is showing her shoulders is going to get dress coded, but maybe the the kid with the eight, you know, the all the A's is not going to be. So we can't pick and choose when it, uh, this policy um, needs to be enforced because I think this is an adult issue. I think um, along the way we dropped the ball and people started to decide that, hey, that's okay and that's not okay. Um, so I think it needs to go to policy, but it needs to go to policy the way it was intended from what she asked and, and not just pick a portion that makes sense for you or whoever is asking for this motion. Uh, Mr. Wollaston, and then one more round with Mr. Panos. All right, so I agree with uh, the sentiments of my colleagues. Um, I think we're being extremely dismissive by even focusing on this mainly because the student rep brought us this, this graph. And from the student's perspective and from the teacher's perspective, the, issue, the biggest issue they have is with item A, item B, item I, and item I. And in this, well, I said it in the, the, the board policy numbers, but item one, item two, and item, item nine. We're right here discussing sending item 11. Look at the differences. These are the ones that people mainly have an issue with, the students and the district employees. Item one, item two, item nine. Those are the top three. And we're sitting here talking about item 11 because it's sagging. The student voice just came back with, this is data. This is actual data. But about what the teachers have an issue with and what the, what the, what the students have an issue with. And we're focusing on it's not, it's not in the top three. And I'm not saying there's an, I, I'm, I agree with wearing your pants at waist level. It's what I believe. But we're sitting here and we're discussing sending that only, that solely to policy. When we, the student rep has brought issues to us, multiple issues with the policy, and we're taking one that wasn't even in the top three. And that's what we're going to run with. And that's where I draw the line, and that's where I have an issue. So if we make the motion, a motion that says, hey, let's send the entire thing for revision, I would be in agreement.
But to focus on the undergarment showing, it's, it's going to be a no for me. Hard pass. Mr. Panos and Ms. Cantor. Okay, no one is focusing, is telling, no one can focus and simply tell the policy committee that they can't cover anything else. Where that came from, I don't know. We're simply saying that we heard straight from a student, and this was uh, repeated, you know, this uh, was said several times. It was. Now, I if they enforce them correctly, then the um, um, inequity would disappear. This was the point that was brought out based upon, based upon the argument that was made. There was a, 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 there was a further point which uh, uh, probably, you know, that, that, um, that was uh, said about people deriving certain um, uh, opinions uh, that they would be, uh, uh, young ladies would uh, acquire the feeling that they um, were at fault for un unwanted or unsolicited sexual advances things of this, which I think is, I would fall on the policy of, would, would fall on the, uh, in the category of being irrelevant, uh, because it, it, it's just something else. But what the initial point was that it was an inequity, because in the one case, for girls, this, this was enforced, and for boys, it wasn't. Well, obviously, they're not supposed to, both of them are wrong, and the way you take care of it is to take care of well, it to, to make is to is to enforce the what obviously in the policy that obviously needs some sort of specificity added to it. So all we're doing is simply emphasizing this particular point. So uh, I, I I don't see that there's any contradictory contradiction to taking those up. The other point about this is that this data does not say. Or they don't want this, you know, or that, or that they're they're violating it. Some some are saying, obviously, some are saying they want the coat. It's just simply these are items that they want discussed. Am I correct? That's what it's about. That it's that that over here is not whether they should. Um, I mean, are they all saying everybody has to wear a coat? Is that and so are we saying here that the staff, the staff are over here saying that. Is that, is that what this means here? When when you when you look on uh, the, the first item, item one, that has to do with wearing, right? So is, does this mean the staff and the students are all saying, yeah, we all we should all come in and wear our overcoats inside? I assume not have to, but they sh should be allowed to. Yes, correct? This, that oh, so the, those points of data um, show that both staff and students believe that students should be able to wear their coats inside. Um, oh, okay. So all of these items are things that are to loosen, to essentially eliminate most of the um, uh, most of the dress code. I will send. I will be sending you the data. The data will be explaining each individual point that the students um, and staff have both requested alterations to. So, so we're saying that a huge percentage of the staff think that the students should wear. Be overcoat in be in class. It's not uh, that they should wear; it's that they think they should be allowed to. They're um, the way no, you're they should, okay, they should be allowed to wear. Uh, well, I'm rather it's, surprised that the staff. It's the difference between these people should be wearing them or they should be allowed to wear them. The key word being allowed. <laughs> Won't we just eliminate the dress code? <laughs> Ms. Cantor and then Ms. Clay. What I'm really concerned about is children's education, the students' education, and I find it ironic that this is like a number one priority in the school system for students. I really do. I'm really concerned about all children learning and behaving and being prepared to be the best they can to be able to attain a great education through the Windsor Public School Systems and to be successfully independent financially and raise a family and be a good productive member of society. So I, I, I'm having a hard time dealing with this. I just wanted to say that because there are so many other priorities in education than the dress code. Thank you. Clay? Um, so I, I just want to 
bring us back to the matter. I think there's broad consensus in this group that the policy could be looked at. I think we all agree to that. I think the discomfort is in the specificity of the motion being sent to policy. So I think what we're asked, some of us are asking is, can that be broadened so that we can consider what the student has brought about their survey, perhaps talk to other people in the community, and perhaps look and look at the the most the specificity of the, the thing that was said, the motion that was said, but also look at everything in a broader context. So the policy committee have a conversation conversation and then bring it as a recommendation. But I think what I heard is broad consensus is that it should go to policy. Well, I don't think we're going to get the yeah, vote and I th and I if think it's going to be specific. Correct. And I think, and I had talked to Mr. Panos about this idea when he had raised it the other day, and I said, you know. We, don't we shouldn't have to send this to policy right away until we hear, because I know the Action Club's working on something. It may go through school governance, which gives it a little more uh, consensus between parents, teachers, administrators, and students. And Mr. Pino says, I didn't, no, I didn't mean this should be sent to policy immediately, but that this should be something when the school does come up with something that should be looked at. Right. I think the, the way it's drafted right now, I will vote against it, but I will hopefully be voting later on for the whole dress code to be an open thing right. that the policy committee looks at. I will oppose this tonight the way it's written, but I will support opening it up to, to everything that board members want to look at, and it could mean also if board members want to, to be having a, an open night that we've had before on this issue a number of years ago. I know Mr. Halleck in, in the past has done a good presentation about uniforms. Yep. I know yep. Abby talked about looking at the Bloomfield uniform type policy as part of, of the work that she was doing. So I probably will vote against this as written, but I will be supporting a wide open down the road, hopefully there'll be a motion to that effect down the next few meetings, mm -hmm. um, to be opening up the dress code to be looked at. Abby, did you have one more thing to say? I would just say there is a broad set of data. So there is a broad spectrum of things that could be discussed. I would say that just looking at we want some prevention at one point in time so that we can take the ability of from a student perspective to be able to get the entire board, uh, board of education dress policy looked at. In the past, when certain things were At this point, I'm ready to have the vote. Is everybody ready to vote on this? All those in favor of sending the motion as it is to uh, to policy, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 Abstention. Motion fails three to six. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Just to quickly run through this, we have, so phase three of Sage Park's HVAC project was approved at a special town meeting on January 3rd by a unanimous vote. Um, also, for the community, I have started at the behest of our communications coordinator, Ms. Gill, started a podcast called Chat and Chill with Super Hill. Um, not like Superman, so I'm here to snickering over here. But <laughs> Uh, <laughs> a supportive snicker. Oh, okay. So I am ex <laughs> I'm excited to announce the debut of our first ever podcast. Um, so you should have already seen the first one, which was done uh, with one of our uh, in the culinary department. One of our students, who um, we have a 
student recipe that's going, it's actually in the NASA Hunch competition. <coughs> so potentially, the further along um, this meal goes in the program, it has an opportunity to be accepted by NASA ultimately in Texas, and it will become one of their freeze-dried meals that will go off to space with them. I tasted the pre-freeze-dried, it was very delicious. So I'm hoping the student wins. And it was nice to actually do my first podcast, I've never done one, but to um, work with one of our students and she's really interested in culinary arts and is looking to go off to school, she's a senior, and that, that's just, it's really good. I just, I also, I've completed the second uh, podcast, so that will be released tomorrow. And so we're trying to keep a pace of doing two a month at this point. And the focus will be, um, I'm looking forward to bringing more stories that matter most to featuring students, educators, alumni, staff, parents, and more. And more would be like across the community and other people that are relevant to um, education. You will hear about the stories and journeys of our amazing school community as, as I navigate through the buildings. You can listen to these Apple on Apple Podcasts or through the link on the website when it's sent or our other social media platforms. You can also Google Chat and Chill with Super Hill. And you will be able to um, get the podcast. So uh, this is also part of you know, who I am and what I've said again from day one. There's a lot of good um, and great things going on in Windsor. Um, I am not shy about promoting Windsor. And I've said many times before, it's the reason why I moved here. I did not move here for a job. I was he working here four years before I moved my family to Windsor. So I could have kept my job and lived somewhere else. So there are a lot of great things here. And I think that a lot of times, it's, it's society in general, right? We do it in our own homes. We, we don't focus on the good. We, we focus on, I think, too often the negative or the bad things. I've decided in my career, 30 years in education, there are enough people doing that, the negative part, so I let them do it. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I want to promote the good things because no one ever hears about the good things. It's like, you know, we wait till graduation time and this is the valedictorian, salutatorian, you know, class president, and this one did this, and people think, oh, oh, wow, great, and they get the one clap the one day. But these are students doing this work every single day throughout the school year. I also encourage um, board members and the public to visit a school. Don't, the COVID thing is not an excuse anymore. You can go to a school, they're gonna run your license through our Raptor system, and you know, you wanna visit, you can visit. So people can actually see what's happening. Um, I, I feel it's necessary to repeat, no, I'm never gonna engage you on social media, never, period. So that's your platform, whoever you are, you can have it, you can continue to talk on it. I will do my coffee talks, my public meetings, I have no problem meeting with people in my office, but I am a one-on-one -on -one or in-your-face person, and I think social media conversation, it doesn't benefit anyone but the people hiding behind a keyboard. So I will never, ever respond to that. And this podcast is yet one more thing to promote all the good things that are happening in Windsor Public Schools. So that's what you're going to get. On Saturday, January 21st, Sage Park will be hosting their third VEX IQ Robotics Qualifying Competition. The students in the TSA, or Technology Student Association Program, have been working hard to get their robots ready, and I'm looking forward to them doing a great job. This is, again, one more positive thing. Hopefully I'll be able to get an interview in with um, some reps and students from this program for one of the podcasts, but this is another good thing. I know our president is very involved in this as well, the robotics program. These, these are the things that students do. This is, as uh, Ms. Cantor said, I'm about student learning and about school. I'm with you, Ms. Cantor. Thank you. This is what school is about, right? Like, not diminishing other topics that have been discussed, but that's not why I came into education. I chose not to go into law enforcement and corrections for a reason. I have a ton of friends. Mom's a retired cop, a lot of respect. But I chose not to do that because there were just things I didn't want to be engaged in. Um, our Windsor High School girls basketball team is enjoying an exciting season so far under the supervision of Coach Brittany Huggins, who's a Windsor alum, class of 2007. I am so proud of Brittany, and she will be um, very shortly an upcoming podcast. So I already have a, a number of them listed out, and she is one. She's nervous, so I'm probably putting her on the spot right now. So many of our alumni are returning to our district for their careers, and I'm very proud of that fact. That means that they had a good experience in Windsor. 
And so good enough so that they finish college, they come back, they want to work here. They graduate from high school, Windsor High, they've worked in a few other places, they want to come work here. Um, currently the girls have an eight and three record, so they're definitely doing great and I'm, I'm really proud. The next coffee talk is on Tuesday, January 24th at 4.30 in the LP Wilson Auditorium. Um, due to uh, me having to attend a funeral for my family out of state, we had to move this week's coffee talk, so that's why it's on January 24th. Also, all schools will be closed on Monday, February 20th, and Tuesday, February 21st for the President's Day break. District offices will be open on February 21st. And to add insult to injury with our discussion, I know we got all these groups and all these things. One of my um, plans last year that did not get underway, the Coffee Talk did, but I didn't really get to do what I wanted to do, was to start a student senate. So I'm going to start a student senate. I've already asked the administration at middle school and high school to get me some names by the end of this week. And I, there'll be representation, male and female, all grades from, you know, so there'll be eight obviously from the high school and six from the middle school. And so the point of the Student Senate, I'm looking to model myself after um, what my colleague Tim Sullivan does at CREC. They will meet with me uh, approximately two hours a month and they will come here. They'll get community service hours, but they will, I will get active student voice continuously. Um, I'm not a believer in one voice. I'm not, and I'm not a believer in just the good kids speak. So I say that, and I know maybe some people might not understand it, but you know what I mean. So I don't really believe people don't understand that. I specifically told the administrators I do not want my straight A kids. They do a lot, I'm proud of them. <laughs> but they cause enough ruckus, as you can see. I don't need any more of them. No. But what I, why I did this specifically is because the students who are not our straight A kids, and I'm not talking about kids failing either, you need to focus on learning, but the kids in the middle always get overlooked. They always get overlooked. And they're the ones, I guarantee you, who address this survey more than anyone else. Because I know kids, I know my field. So I want to sit down with them and I want them to feel like they really have a voice and I'm not talking about you know, some cursory act like, oh, you spoke, I gave you something to eat, bye. They have a voice. So the things that they're going to bring up, you guys are going to hear about it. And the things that aren't required for the board to do, we're going to make changes. They're going to come up with recommendations and we're going to implement those recommendations as long as they're safe and they're of benefit to the school community. So that's something I wanted to do, so which is interesting to listen to all the, I know we have the SGC, we have you know, the, the, social, the Student Action Club, and I'm, there's nothing to get rid of those things, obviously, but this is one more opportunity for student voice to be heard. I hear from adults all the time, all the time, like too much. So I wanna hear from students, because we keep saying we're here for students, we care about students, but we never ask students much of anything, but we make all decisions for them, you know, with them absent from the conversation. And so, I don't wanna do that anymore. So that's, so you'll hear more about that. That would be my report for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, any questions to Dr. Hill about his report? Ms. Cantor? I have a question, but I'm not sure if it fits the scenario, and I'm sorry. At the Windsor Public High School, there is an outdoor pool is that being repaired at all? I know it's not, I don't think it's being used in the summer for swimming. I mean, the indoor one is, but so does anybody know about that? What's going like, on with yes, that? I'll let Ms. Batchelor answer that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it, it is used um, in the summer. That actually is the town of Windsor's pool for Park and Rec. So the Park and Rec um, through the town of Windsor uses the outside pool. So you can, so students use that? Through Park and Rec, not through okay. Windsor Public Schools. Okay. I know it's. Okay. No, I didn't know. And looks I just like it's ours, but the yeah. times I did see it, it was empty. You know, wa no water in it. Yeah, so, and yeah. I believe last summer they were they were doing some something mechanical, so oh, okay. it was off. But right. yeah, they drain it and then they fill it up back right. up. Thank you. Every spring. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and any other questions? No. Uh, Mr. Panos. I'm just intrigued with your statements. I hear from adults all the time but not from the students. Well, you have a whole bunch of podcasts and coffee clashes with adults. You set them up that way. To hear from them? 
Obviously, they're the done adults. for you to hear from the so adults. The why don't you do a coffee right. down in, right. down in Florida happening. High School? The coffee, you're right, Mr. Pam, the coffee talk was for the adults. That's why I said I failed in my own desire last year. So uh, the coffee well, talk you caused the right. problem. I caused it. <laughs> but the thing that I, Dr. Hill will do is I believe in fixing the problem. I have no problem with saying, okay, I messed up. Time to fix it. That's an educator, right? You, I took a test. I didn't do it as great as I'd like to. I'm taking it again and to get my A because that's what I get. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any that's other that's questions? Ms. Clays. Um, yeah, we had a, um, a public comment person talk about um, fees. Do we have any idea about how many groups are charged fees that are largely Windsor residents? And is there any way we can have an understanding of that for the budget sessions? For our budget? Sure, I would have to pull that, um, you know, off the top of my head, I, I can think of a few water rats being, you know, number one. Um, but the policy absolutely needs to be looked at. It's a policy from years and years ago. The, the, the dollar amount that's attached to the policy doesn't even match any, like, we're currently undercharging. I, I understand what people are saying, but we're actually undercharging. It doesn't even cover our custodial overtime that's coming out of our general fund. So. It is something we need to look at, budget and through policy. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, does any, are there any committee reports? Seeing, seeing none. Okay. Other matters, announcements, regular Board of Ed meetings. Board of Ed public forum with a finance committee immediately following on Tuesday, January 24th, 2023, at 6 p.m. at LPW Boardroom. And as we mentioned before, this will probably be another opportunity to see uh, Dr. Hill's PowerPoint. And uh, item 13B, Board of Ed Public Forum with Finance Committee immediately following on Tuesday, January 31st, 6 p.m. at the LPW Boardroom. 13C, Board of Ed Public Forum with Finance Committee immediately following at Tuesday, February 7th, 2023 at 6 p.m. And 13D, Board of Ed Finance Committee, Tuesday, February 14th at 6.30 LPW if needed, in the hope, uh, as Mr. Lockhart mentioned, that it will not be needed in particular on, on that day. Um, and the next Board of Ed regular meeting is Wednesday, February 22nd at 7 p.m. in the LPW boardroom. Next item is audience to visitor. Good evening. This is Alexis Shack from the superintendent's office. If there is anyone from the public who would like to address the board, you may do so in two different ways. If you are using the Zoom application on your mobile device or computer, you may enter your comments into the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the Zoom menu bar. Or you may raise your hand on your computer if your device has a microphone by selecting the participants icon on the Zoom menu bar and then clicking raise hand or by dialing star nine on your phone. You will be given three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. When you are called on, you will be promoted to panelist. After you make your comments, you will return to attendee status. For clear communication, we ask that you do not place the call on speakerphone. No comments can be made against the employees of the school district or children outside of your own. Thank you. And as we said earlier uh, on the audience to visitor, um, for those in attendance here at the two and a half minute mark, Vice President Lockhart will hold up a red card and then hold it up continuously at the three minute mark. And at that point, please conclude your remarks. For people uh, who can't see us uh, on, on the phone, Mr. Lockhart will mention when that two and a half minute mark and the three minute mark are met. Is there anybody uh, online or on the phone? We'll start that way this time who wants to address the board. Mr. President, there are no individuals with their hand raised and there are no questions in the queue. Great. Anybody in the boardroom? Okay, and without objection, I'll close audience to visitor. Thank you. We have a new item, number 15. Is there a motion? Oh. oh. Yeah, so, so put it away. Okay. <laughs> I move that the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss a matter involving confidential student records, inviting the superintendent of schools, Dr. Hill, and Mr. Kelvin Kirsten. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Abstention. Motion carries 9-0-0. We are out uh, of the regular session and into executive session at 8-55. Back in the meeting at this point, it's 925, and I'm looking for a motion. Mr. President? Yes, sir. Move for adjournment. Is there a second? I second it. Move. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart. I had him. Second by uh, Ms. Oh, Cantor. Any okay. discussion? Not fast. I think Mr. Mr. Panos wants to object to that. I <laughs> object. Do you have a specific <laughs> objection? <laughs> uh, no, all I'm those in favor fun. say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, nay. Abstention. Motion carries 900. We are adjourned at 925. Same minute we came back. Yep. Thank you.